We are back here on Opposites of Track. John Stanko and uh, yours truly, Anthony Carlo, coming to you on this, uh, I'd say it's a nice Monday evening, wouldn't you? It was, it's very nice outside. Yeah, I'd say the uh, cold weather is uh, departing from us, thankfully. Oh, yes. I also want to point out that tonight is the series finale of How I Met Your Mother. And I will have you know that huh. later tonight I will be crying in my room watching the final hour of my favorite comedy sitcom of all time. Oh, wow. That's I nice to know. I fully admit I will be probably in tears. Aw. Let's get an awe from everybody. Have you seen uh, the show? Have how you ever watched a show from beginning to end every episode? How, how I Met Your Mother, the one with... Uh, you don't know the show? No, I know the I know the show. Neil Patrick Harris? Yes. I mean, yes. I don't like that show. <laughs> John has just thrown a Gatorade bottle at me. I am ashamed to know Anthony Carlo that he oh, does God. not like how I, I just met shot your our friendship to hell. That's yes, it. you basically did. <laughs> I am I really? ashamed. I, I I knew I was going to get distraught. A, I was hesitant in that split second when I chose to say that. Yeah, you know what? It's not my favorite Why? show. Okay. Why don't you like it? You know what? Let me be honest. I haven't watched the the uh, the seasons. I haven't watched every episode. So you know what? I I can't judge the show. All I can say is that I've put it on sometimes, and I wasn't amused. Okay. So I would change the channel. One, change your humor button, whatever it is. You need to get it recalibrated. <laughs> uh, Two, I bet your father likes it because you're right about everything. <laughs> Three, watch it from beginning to end, and if you don't fall in love with the characters, then you have no soul. You're already a Yankee fan, so you already are diminished in that category, but you have no soul if you do not fall in love with the characters of How I Met Your Mother. Fine. All right. So now I have to watch this? Is that what you're saying? Yes. It's on Netflix every single season. So literally, don't come to school the next two weeks and let me know uh, that'll be a good how, idea. how it I'll comes tell out. my teacher, John Stanko, has me watching every single episode of How I Met Your Mother. Steve Coulter did it. You could do it too. Did he like it? He loved it because he knows good television. Steve, call us up. Call us collect right now and verify. <laughs> I don't believe this man. Steve Coulter. I don't believe this liar. He's a Red Sox fan. I don't believe him. Oh my God! I'm ashamed that you don't like how I met your mother. I am genuinely. I ashamed. find Neil Patrick Harris in the show to be annoying, because wait, he, wait, wait—he is a legend. Wait for it, Dairy. He's legendary. <laughs> I had to wait for the Dairy to come. That's an inside joke from the show, which you don't even know because you don't watch it. I see. Now I understand. Slaps giving. Watch the Slapsgivings episode, and if you don't I, like I don't them or Neil, I have no idea what that watch, means. Type in Slapsgiving. Uh, the, my favorite guy is the guy with the black hair. That he, he he's kind of like sad. Ted Mosby. Ted Mosby, maybe. My alter ego. Yeah, maybe that one. Ted Mosby. Okay, he's a good character, but he's probably honestly the least funny on the, the show. The only thing I know about that show is they all come to the same place and they sit down. Clarence. And they say very annoying jokes. Oh my god. I'm going to walk out of this studio. Don't I'm do going that. to walk do away. You know what? I'm entitled to my opinion. And sometimes your humor gears more towards, you know, Okay, what show is funny to you then? King of, I, I, I was a fan of King of Queens. I was a fan of Seinfeld. Okay, um, I, I respect Seinfeld. I was not a fan, big fan of King of Queens, but I like Seinfeld. I was a fan, I was a fan of The Office. Okay, I did not like The Office. Um... You know, I mean, out of sitcoms, you consider How I Met Your Mother a sitcom? I, it's a sitcom, yeah. So probably you'd compare it then to King of Queens and Seinfeld. And maybe Everybody Loves Raymond. I'm e not, everyone I'm, loves Everybody Loves Raymond. If you don't like Everyone Loves Raymond, you got... I mean, I do, but out, out of Seinfeld, King of Queens, and Everybody Loves Raymond, I would go Seinfeld. I would... I don't know about... I'm just a King of Queens fan, so I probably would go King of Queens, Seinfeld, Everybody Loves Raymond. But most people would go Seinfeld... King of Queens, in if they were comparing those two, I do like Everybody Loves Raymond though. Everyone loves that show. If I they if they show. ranked it, you know how it would go. It would go Seinfeld, Everybody Loves Raymond, King of Queens, probably. I, do, I listen. All I'm saying is that you need to watch How I Met Your Mother from beginning to end. It's like a modern one. It's a more modern. Appreciate one. how awesome fine. It I is. can't judge anything. All I did was give you my perspective over the minutes I've watched. You, you're getting Why very you sad. You're getting very like touchy. No, I'm not sad. You're getting, you're getting very no, touchy. I'm just not looking at you today. I I'm finding that I'm making my points best <laughs> when I'm staring at the ground. I don't know why. Sometimes when I look at you, I lose my train of thought. I don't know why. Don't worry, Je dashing. Don't worry, Jessica. It has nothing to do with I'm it. I'm dashing, but you should watch. I bet you Jessica watches How I Met Your Mother. 
She doesn't watch TV. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, I, I know people <laughs> who don't a, watch TV. She, she watches TV, but she's not. I don't think she's a huge person. She likes Pretty Little Liars. She oh. likes shows like that. Oh. Like she watches TV, she'd watch yeah. something like that. Does Jacqueline like How I Met Your Mother? She put. She likes it when it's on television. Yes, she does. When it's on. When it's she on. doesn't make a point to watch no, it every single but episode. She still like appreciates its humor when it is on the telly. <laughs> on the telly. On the telly. Okay, fine. Okay, can you pick a... Co- Wait, no, no. We're sidetracking. Can you pick a comedy show that you like that's on air now? Every show yeah. you picked is not even airing now. You mean like in a, in a season right in now? In a season. What show they do is air. current? They air. Okay, they... what show is current right now that you like? Um, I don't like Modern Family. Okay, I'm with you there. I think Modern Family's a little bit overrated. I mean... I'm with you. You know, to be honest, not one show out now has struck me like the classics. Okay. So that's my honest. Let me my, my honest let me answer. paint a picture for you. Let me give you some recommendations for you to expand your comedic horizons okay, in the ahead. media of television. In the medium of television. Go ahead. One, watch How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Uh, two, watch the show Archer on FX. Archer. Because I've heard it of that. is hilarious. It is grotesque, meaning do not watch it with your parents. But watch Archer. We're talking about violence or sexual content. It is. Or? It is. Um. Yes, all of the above. Um, and it's on FX? It is on FX. Huh? Well, Sons of Anarchy is there, too. Yeah. So I American guess... Horror Story is on FX. They can get away with anything. Yeah, that is true. Uh, okay. And then also watch on FXX, The League. Oh, boy. FXX? The League. It is a what strictly... What channel is that? I have no idea. Uh, I only watch it online. But it is a strictly uh, male comedic show fantasy centering around fantasy football and NFL. And it is... Oh my God! It's you have to wash yourself clean after after watching it. <laughs> but it is a hilarious imagine. show. All right. Well. Okay. So I, I got recommend my, everybody Archer. take notes. Take your recommendations out there. John has recommended Archer. Archer. And, and for and for men who like football and fantasy football, watch the league. But I recommend Archer. Do they make vulgar comparisons and like stuff oh like that? Oh my God! It's it's grotesque. Who is it? Is anybody in it that like we know of? Uh, Phil Kroll. Do you know Phil Kroll from Comedy Central? I probably do by sight. He, he, I can't remember. He's that. about the only the only recognizable figure on the show. But they have like guest stars. They have like they have JJ Watt in a couple episodes. Like they get NFL stars to go on the show. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so I'll, but that's only online. You said it's online. Okay, so I'll, I'll okay I'll 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 um I'll look into those two things. You should dabble. You should dabble. I will. I don't know how he does it. I don't know. He has find, finds time to watch all these things plus sports. You know, it's very interesting. I I don't know. It's very intriguing. Watch Archer. Archer's hilarious. Archer is my second favorite comedy behind How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Fine. It is very well done. Very I didn't know well you were done. a How I Met Your Mother fan. That's one thing about John I know today that I didn't know yesterday. As well as the fact I, that he's dashing. And that's why. That, I that is true. But I'm every college student, like, I don't, you're like the first one I know to outrightly say, I don't like How I Met Your Mother. You're the first person I've ever met to say, I don't like it. I mean,. I, I'm I'm just I'm a little like bit. Like I said, I'm I going like, to be honest with you. I'm a little bit in shock. I like things people don't like. I guess Michael K. That's, that's a prime example. <laughs> um, How I Met Your Mother is something that I guess apparently I'm missing out on. You know, according yeah. to John, you know what else did we just go through? The Yankees and Jeter being arrogant. I don't know. It just it, it never ends. It never ends. All right. I'm always the odd one out. I officially sidetracked this show. You did. Major. So, but I don't mind it. I don't major think people detour, mind it. Major detour. We're going to revert back onto course. I like when we de- – I like it. I like it. I, I'm aware. You need a TV vacation, a TV education. A TV I, vacation and an uh, education. No, a t- uh, telefication. A telefication. Television S- info television. Telefication. Like, okay. a, like a movie vacation. I'm not it's too a sure telefication. telefication is a word. It is not. I just made it, it up. It is not a word. But – it still works. Television. Okay. Maybe it's I'm gonna time to I'm gonna on. create a list for you. Okay. All the shows you a should list. watch. All right, fine. You're gonna gain twenty pounds watching them Fair all. N- oh, okay. Well but, <laughs> see that's the problem. I have to replace it probably with gym time. That's how. Bring your iPad and watch it while you do some push ups. <laughs> you know, I I'll try. I mean I have to be in the zone usually, but I'll try. You gotta be in the zone. You gotta be in the zone to get big. Yeah. Pump an iron. No, yeah. You know, running, whatever. People watch TV while they run. I like to run sometimes, so maybe I'll do that. All right. I'm glad. Or maybe we could spend our double date nights watching How I Met Your Mother. I'd be fine with that. 
That would be great. <laughs> Maybe one, once or twice we can work that out. That'd be it. fantastic. Okay, so good to keep in but mind. But it's, it's ending. We can't even do it. Because I'm literally I'm going to be crying tomorrow, Tuesday morning or tomorrow or tonight. Are you really going to cry? I honestly might. I might. I'm telling you right now, I might honestly cry. That's the last episode was really touching. If anything, that means the show got that the show did its job. Oh God, I am invested in these characters. Good. Great. I am invested. Great. That's great to know. Great. I'm gonna have for everyone listening. For everyone listening, my bold prediction is that Barney. And Ted are going to open up a bar called Puzzles, which is a which is a uh, reference to earlier on in the series when there was an episode about that. And I do believe that that's going to happen. I do not believe that Ted is going to go wherever he's going to go. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I think Ted and Barney will end up opening a bar called Puzzles. So they, so there you go. Now we got another prediction to wager on. Boom. Even though I don't know anything about it, so I can't. All right, it. so I got my how I met your mother prediction in. Yeah. Now let's get to baseball. Let's get baseball predictions in. All right, so we uh, earlier on we went into our strongest to weakest uh, divisions, and now I guess we'll start in the American League, and uh, why not start in the East? I guess. Why not? Work our way down. The, the the home of both of our favorite teams, and uh, go ahead, give me your prediction for the East. Uh, for the um, for the American League East, I have the Boston Red Sox winning the division. I think it's going to be a very tight race, though. I don't see I I only see Toronto coming in last. Otherwise, Baltimore, Tampa Bay, or the Yankees will be competing for the division with the Boston Red Sox. I think the Red Sox will win it by less than three games. Uh, by a Boston winning the American League East. Okay, bold prediction. Um, not that bold. There are defending. No, World it's Series not champs. bold, but uh. You know, do you get sarcasm? No. Do you, you use it a you lot. Need to, you need to, like... You use it a lot. You need to you emphasize it? your sarcasm more. You, you should be, like, bold prediction there. Like, that's sarcasm. You but can't the be... sarcasm is funny when you, when you say it more in normal conversation. No, it's not. Then you don't understand it. That's like saying sarcasm through a text. You just don't get it. I kind of said very bold prediction. I didn't say bold... What you gotta be more prediction. enthusiastic. What a bold prediction. There you John. go. That's what sarcasm. That is sarcasm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this has been some episode. Um, this is why it's called opposite detract. All right. Let me let me see what I'm going here. I think that, first of all, I have to make a statement that the Yankees are not coming in third. As most people... Uh, we have not gone to our wild cards yet, so I'm not going to... Oh, we're just doing uh, division we're winners We're just doing first? division winners first. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, um... Fine. So, fine. In this one, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Red Sox in first. I will go with the Red Sox in first. I will say that um, because of one reason mainly. I think that they have a stellar pitching staff. I think that, you know, arguably they're one of the best pitching staffs in the league. Um, and I think that um, they have enough offense to get things done. I know they've lost... They lost Napoli. I mean, not Napoli. I'm sorry. Um, who am I thinking of? Ellsbury. They lost Jaco- Jacoby Ellsbury. Um, and they lost... Um, they gained A.J. Przinsky. That's what I wanted Salt to say. Salt Lamakia they lost. Salt Lamakia they lost. Um, I think that they have enough offense to get it done. So I will say the Red Sox will win the American League East. All right. We agree on that. Moving on. Let's go to the AL Central. Uh, I think this one's a, a pretty easy pick. I think this is... Uh, Pretty easy when I got the Detroit Tigers. I think they're going to win the AL Central by at least, I'd say, seven games. Okay. The Detroit Tigers, we agree there because I think that above all the teams I looked at, there's not one that scares me offensively and pitching-wise. I think the Tigers, between Verlander, Sanchez, you know, um, not Sanchez, Scherzer. Verlander, Scherzer, at the top of that and then rounding it out with guys like Porcello and Annabelle Sanchez who can definitely hold the fort down plus a, a, you know a, an offense that has guys like Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez and even losing Fielder I don't think was that much of a loss because they even got Ian Kinsler mm-hmm. out of it and he's not bad at all Mm-mm. so I mean just up and down I think that they scare both ways so yes I will agree with you with that so we've got both two agreements all right let's move it on to the west who do you have winning the American League West? The American League West, I have none other but the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I think that this will be the Angels' year. 
I mean, of course, the stud Mike Stri- Mike Trout, you know, is is making his home out there in the outfield. But up and down, I th- I can't. I don't think you should count Hamilton out of having a, a bounce back year. I think that you know, um, between Trout, pretty much, and then they, they you can't remember they picked off some good uh, bench production with Raul Ibanez. You know, we can name all of the uh, the great names that normally start for the Angels, but I think that. Um, you have to take in cons- into consideration that they do have a good bench as well. And I think that, um, you know, uh, when you could put them up against the the Mariners and, you know, the A's, I feel like the A's are going to have a drop-off. I'd say the only threat legitimately would be the Rangers. But, um, you know, you just can't discount Pujols and Trout and guys like that offensively. And they have, a, I feel like they have a good enough pitching staff to win that division. I agree with you. I have the Angels winning it. I think it's going to be close between them and the Athletics. I don't think the Rangers will uh, have as good a season as they've had in the past. I'm going to go with the Angels eking out the Athletics. They finally win that division. They finally live up to some of the hype that they had when they made the big offseason signing. So we are in agreement as in, in who we predict for the division winners in the American League. So far, so far, so, far, we are. so good. So uh, let's get to the wild card. Wild cards, go ahead. The wild card, if you will, in the American League, I have the wild cards being the New York Yankees as the first wild card and the Tampa Bay Rays as the second one. I agree with you that the Yankees will not finish below third place. In fact, I think they'll finish second place. I think they'll be competitive as long as they stay healthy, and I'm mm-hmm. banking on that. Uh, right. So I again, that might be wrong, but I think they'll be healthy enough uh, to to improve. Um, I have. The New York Yankees and Tampa Bay Rays being the two wild card teams from the American League. Um, I understand you perfectly, and I will commend you for that decision because I feel like the Yankees will take the first wild card. Staying healthy is key because if 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 not, nobody can come here and tell me that their pitching staff is terrible because I'm not going to believe you, or even say that it's not good enough because even though we we might not have an emerging ace, we have somebody we have a. A, a, a slot filled in each spot that I don't think is going to disappoint. It's not going to plummet. The only player in that rotation that I might think may disappoint this year, surprisingly, is Hiroki Kuroda. I think Sabathia will bounce back. I think Tanaka will have a decent year for his first year in the majors. I think Nova will have a good year, and I think that Pineda will have a very good year. Um, but I agree with you. Stay healthy. And the second spot, I will disagree with you. I think it's time for the Rays to um, move out, and I think the Orioles will be the. Uh, other, you know, it's not it's not hard to make that argument. I think either one yeah. of us could agree either way, but I just think they have way too much young talent between Machado and um, you know Weeders and um, you know uh, just the guys on their team that uh, they have so much talent exploding. Chris Davis, it's just going to to come out to to be them this year. The one thing that people would probably argue with me about is the Rays and the way that they have um, what looks to be a great pitching staff coming up Mm -hmm. because they have a bunch of young starters like Moore and Cobb to back up Price. So they're going to have a great pitching staff this year, I think. But when it comes to, uh, you know, the offense, I think that the Orioles, for me, take it. And if you compare both of their pitching staffs, you'd probably say the Rays would take it. So I think for me or John, it easily could be taken by either the Rays or the Orioles. But I'll say the Orioles. Uh, okay, again, I can't agree with you. I agree. I think I think the A is the best division in baseball, so any team could go in the wild card, get in the playoffs, and make some noise. So I can't I can't disagree with you there. So who do you have winning the American League and advancing to the World Series? Uh, winning the American League and advancing to the World Series, you may know because of my Facebook post yesterday uh the new york yankees i have in the world series um i think that they uh hey they went out they spent a lot of money they bulked up they literally bulked up and even though they do have you know some holes left they have questions in that rotation that you know even though i say it can be solid guys need to execute they have questions in the infield and especially questions with everybody staying healthy i think that they'll be able to um come away with it Okay. Uh, I disagree with you. I'm going with the Detroit Tigers. I think that their pitching is fantastic, even though they lost Doug Fister. I still think they have the best uh, pitching staff in the American League from top to bottom. Uh, and I think you can't discount Miguel Cabrera. Well, if, I think he'll get through this year mostly healthy throughout. And I think that last year, him being banged up the last third of the season in the playoffs really hurt the Tigers. And I think he'll be healthy enough. I think the Tigers will get to the World Series this year. The Tigers do have the strongest team in the American League. I feel that way. Mm-hmm. But uh, you can't always pick it by the book. And I feel like, you know, um, it would be a bit of an underdog upset if the if there another team were to beat them. But uh, the Tigers have not 
you know, they've, they're not the most clutch team, you know, in the past. You know, they have had the potential to make it to the World Series, but haven't. And I know we're not talking about the World Series. We're talking about winning the American League. But you can't help but wonder if that will ever <laughs> carry over to, you know, choking in that as well. You know what I'm saying? Well, we'll find out. We'll find we? out. Yeah. Uh, and then in the American League for MVP, I'm going with Mike Trout of the Angels. I think he is going to cement himself as the best player in baseball this year. If he has not already, I think he wins MVP. And for Cy Young, I'm going with Hugh Darvish of the Texas Rangers. I believe he will be the best pitcher in the American League this year. Um, I, you know, I can't disagree with that choice with Mike Trout being the MVP because uh, he does, you know, he does everything right. So when you excel at everything, that's usually what happens. And uh, Cy Young, um, I actually didn't put thought into this. I'm gonna have to make my decision about the Cy Young at this moment. Um, but for for Cy Young, I am going to go. With, I think Justin Verlander is going to have a, ba- uh, a bounce, bounce back, back year. year, and he's going to win the Cy Young. And the t- it's going to stay uh, with the Tigers. But I will say that his competition will be a Boston Red Sox. I think that between, um, I think either Buckholz, I think Buckholz has the potential to have a real big year, um, and that's why I'm not discounting <laughs> some. I'll say somebody from the Red Sox rotation has the potential to contend with Verlander for Cy Young. All right. Okay, so let's move to the National League before we close this one out. The National League division winners, let's, let's start from the bottom to the top. Let's start with the West in the least competitive division in baseball. The Los Angeles Dodgers, I think, are the clear favorite to win the NL West. I uh, totally agree. I think that they are the best team in the National League. Would you say best team in baseball? No. No, but I would definitely say best team in the National League. Uh, yes, definitely best team in that division. Uh, in the NL Central, I think it's really hard to go against the consistency of the St. Louis Cardinals. I think they will once again take that division. Uh, and to me, the Cardinals are the best team in the National League, not the Dodgers. Hmm. Uh, so I got the, the St. Louis Cardinals winning the NL Central. I will not disagree with you there about the Cardinals, but I will disagree with them being the strongest. But I do think the Cardinals will win the division. I mean, the pitching is too good not to. And, um, you know, they have the bats to get it done. You know, Yadier Molina just anchors everything. A lot of young talent with Alan Craig and Matt Adams. But uh, I agree with you there. All right, let's move on to the NL East then. Who do you got winning the NL East? The NL East, I have uh, the Washington Nationals. Um, the Nationals will win it for me. Um, you know, I just feel like this will be their year. I feel like this needs to be Bryce Harper's first big, big year. I mean, I know he's had some solid years, you know, 20-plus homers last year. Then he had a 270 average, you know, good amount of RBIs. But I'm looking for something 30-plus, 100-plus. And I think that Bryce is going to uh, lead the charge, if you will, for um, – the Nationals this year and have a big year. And also Steven Strasburg, you can't forget about him, but they lead a well-balanced attack. All right, I agree with you. I got the Nationals winning the NL East. We agree on all the division winners. It's a bit odd. Yeah. Uh, the wild cards, you got taking the two wild card spots in the National League. Um, In the National League, I have the, let's see, you will, I'll start with my pick in, hold on, where am I, where am I looking here? I'll start with my pick in the the west and i am going to say that or i'm sorry i'm going to start in the central and i'm going to say that the pittsburgh pirates will win one of those wild cards they came close last year they, no, they were in a wild card they last did. year yeah I'm sorry yeah, the, they did. the cincinnati reds came close mm-hmm. i'll say that the pittsburgh pirates will have their first um well will win their first wild card what about you what's your first pick uh, I have the Braves winning the first wild card. Okay, fair um, they'll be competing with the Nationals all the way to the end in the NL East, and I think they'll get that first wild card. And then the second spot, I have the Pittsburgh Pirates uh, winning the wild card, uh, getting a wild card spot once again. Okay, fine. Uh, I might go with a, a bit of a bold prediction here. I'm going to go for the second spot, winning that wild card, the New York Mets. That's a big one, huh? Bold prediction. It's a big one. That's bold. That's no. how the Grandy Man do today for the Mets. 0 for five. 0 for five. Three yeah. strikeouts. Looking. Yep. What are you trying to? In, what are you trying to say here? That. What are you talking about, huh? I'm just. You're saying gonna say he's gonna hit 19 home runs again man. instead of 24. I'm saying. I'm just saying. Look, I, if anybody knows anything, it's the Grandy Man can. 
<laughs> so he will. The Grandy Man cannot. <laughs> he did not today. Uh, today. Neither did the Mets bullpen. Um, sorry, Mets fans. But uh, that's that's very bold. I, I know. I, I appreciate that. your boldness. I realize that's a crazy pick. I will not disagree with that. That's without Matt it's Hardy. Crazy, I think you got to. I think you have to pick something crazy. Just sometimes you just got to pick something. I the one reason the one reason I did that was because Sandy Alderson said ninety wins was something they strive for. I don't think that. I think eighty to eighty five wins is. So I think that's good enough to win a second wild card. All right, I disagree with you, but I appreciate your boldness. Uh, who do you have winning the National League and advancing to the World Series? Um, winning the National League and advancing the World Series, I have the Los Angeles Dodgers because last year they couldn't do it. Uh, I thought they had the potential to do it. You know, they have. We talked about it before. When your fourth outfielder is Matt Kemp, I mean, you know that they're strong offensively. And of course, they locked up that staff with Kershaw and Greinke and Ryu, and it's just a too well-rounded team to to not finally make the World Series. So I think that's what I'm looking at. All right, uh, I have the St. Louis Cardinals. I, th- I think they're going to get back to the back to the championship game. Um, I think that I think I think they're the best team in the National League from top to bottom. I think they're mm-hmm. built consistently. Um, listen, they're going to. They're in a tougher division, which I think will benefit them. That they're going to be playing tougher teams throughout the year and season themselves for the playoffs better. So playing the likes of the Reds and the Pirates, I think, are more competitive than the likes of the Padres or the Diamondbacks or the Rockies. Uh, granted, the Giants are a competitive team in the West um, as well. But I got I got the Cardinals moving on to the World Series uh, to play the to play the Detroit Tigers. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, I think personally that their well is going to run a little dry. They may make it to the NLCS again or something to the sorts, but I feel like another World Series appearance is not going to be in the uh, the fortune teller's ball. All right. We'll we'll see what happens. Uh, Who do you got for winning the MVP in the National League? You go first. I have Freddie Freeman from the Atlanta Braves. Wow. I'd say that's bold. Uh, That's a bold one. Listen, I think he's a little bit under the radar, but I think he is a very, very good player. Um, I think that the Braves are going to be a good team. And I think that while other people, I mean, Andrew McCutcheon didn't have a great statistical year last year. If you look at it, I think obviously Miguel Cabrera deserved it from my stats perspective in the American league, but Andrew McCutcheon wasn't the leader in multiple categories for the pirates. However, he still won most viable player. That's why I think Freddie Freeman can win it in the national league. He may not lead all the categories, but he'll be high up there in all of them, which is why I have him winning the MVP in the national league. All right. Um, well, I mean, I'm. St- I had to narrow this one down a lot because I had a few options, but I think I'm going to go with Bryce Harper. Okay. I think what? that I will go with the young gun. Yeah, you're going with the two young guns in both leagues. Yeah, Mike Trout and Bryce Harper. Look, th- they didn't talk up this kid for nothing, and I think that it, it may even still be in that stage where he still needs to develop. But I think he showed enough of that development last year. You know, having a power. You know. A pretty decent power year. I just think that this will be a breakout year for him. And with the type of talent he has, breakout probably means, you know, 35 home to 40 home runs, 100 plus RBIs, you know, you know, uh, and, and, and on a team like the Nationals who we're predicting to win the East, I mean, what's not to like for him being an MVP pick? All right. There you go. All right. Not bad. Uh, Cy Young, who do you got in the Cy Young National League? Cy Young, um, I am going to go with uh, Clayton Kershaw. I agree with you. Clayton. How can you deviate from what's been so good? Yeah. Uh, Clayton Kershaw has just been lights out. Um, you know, as you said, I think he'll continue to be that way. He should be. Otherwise, you know, he should start giving some of that money back because <laughs> yeah. he got a huge contract. Um, one of the, I think one of the top, uh, maybe the most paid pitcher ever. Mm-hmm. That contract made news, um, but I th- yeah, I, de- I definitely think that Kershaw will lock it down. All right, and now before we go though, we obviously have to pick our World Series winner. You have the Los Angeles Dodgers against the New York Yankees. I think a respectable pick. I have the Detroit Tigers going up against the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, so I'll let you go first. Who do you have winning your World Series matchup? I never, I never like to go against my team, you know. But uh, you gotta be, you gotta be uh, truthful in in what you're picking. Um, I am going to say that the 
And you are struggling. You can't even get the words out of your mouth right now. You can't even do it. I want to say it. I, I want to say it, but I don't know if I Just can. Just know if you say it, I'm going to taunt you with it till you die in your grave. I'll say the Dodgers are going to win the World Series. I think that it's the Dodgers' year. I think the Yankees will be in the World Series. Um, How many games? Um, I'll say Dodgers and seven. I'll say that it's respectable for them to uh, both be in the World Series, but, um, you know, Dodgers, I think it's probably time for them. All right. Uh, I I can't really I can't really disagree with you. Um, I think the Dodgers do have a a shot to win it. I'm not gonna take that away. Uh, I have the St. Louis Cardinals winning the World Series over the Detroit Tigers in six. Okay, so the Cardinals will uh, make up for what they lost ground with last year. That that is that is my goal. I got the Cardinals over the Tigers. Sounds fair to me. So uh, n- I hope nobody ever forgets these because you can laugh at us if we're wrong with anything. It'll probably happen. It'll almost definitely happen. What, your pick? No, no, laughing at us oh, at our well, predictions yeah. because no one can ever predict something right. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but I think we're going to call it a night here for Opposites Attract. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Of course, we'll be back here next week, Monday, 730. Be there or be square. (laughs) For John Stanko and I, we bid you farewell. Have a good night, everybody.